My name is Vikas Jain and we are going to do a small introductory video on understanding the basics and fundamentals of an instrument called as derivatives. Now, what do derivatives really mean? Derivatives are basically financial instruments. Some sort of an asset class and then why are they called as derivatives? Because these financial instruments derive value from or avoiding the numbers from some other asset. So what does it mean? It means that we have two assets, asset A and asset B. Every time value of asset B either increases or decreases based on the way, based on the fact that value of asset B is changing the value of asset A is going to change so, and therefore we would call it that asset A is a derivative instrument where the underlying asset is going to be asset B. Now let's do a small example and let's get hold of this concept properly. Let's say that, let's, let's take any dish that we like, let's say that all of us like masala dosas, so let's start with masala dosas. Now, Let's say that the price at which these dosas are available in the market at good quality restaurant, let us say is rupees 70 per unit per dosa. Now, imagine the problem of the restaurant owner who sells this dosa at 70 rupees. That he's got a menu card, he's written the price of masala dosa as rupees 70. Now, what are the inputs required here? Primarily, the most important input is going to be potatoes. Now the problem is that the price of these potatoes in the market will keep on changing. So the price of the potatoes might be available at rupees 15 per kg or 20 per kg based on how the other factors and how the vegetable market is moving, the prices of potatoes would change. But the price of the masala dosa cannot change every day, which means that I have some certain input. I am processing that and then I am selling it. Now the prices of my input is changing every day whereas the price at which I am selling my dosa in the market that price is not going to change and therefore the profit margin that I am going to earn on every dosa that I sell not necessary that it is going to be same which means that there is a significant uncertainty that is associated with this particular business. So now let's say that the owner of this restaurant is Mr. Shetty. Now Mr. Shetty is worried and he thinks that how can I overcome this problem and how come I can overcome the uncertainty which is attached with these prices of potatoes. So now what he does is that he gets a hold of a farmer. So let's say that he knows some farmer in rural areas outside the city. So this is our farmer here. So let's try to draw him. This would be our farmer. We want him to be really thin, not so happy probably. And then this is our Mr. Shetty. We'll try to show him a bit. Yes, this is Mr. Shetty. Now Shetty goes to farmer and says that you produce thousand or approximately thousand cages of potato every three months. Now the price at which you sell these potatoes would be dependent on the price that exists in the market when you go to sell there. Now there is an uncertainty that you face as well that you do not really know what is the price at which you will be able to sell these potatoes. So let's now come to an understanding and what is that understanding? That three months from today when your potatoes would be ready for sale in the market, I will buy these potatoes from you, all of them thousand kgs of potatoes and let us fix the price of these potatoes today itself. That means no matter what the price of potatoes is in the market three months from now, the price at which you are going to sell it to me and the price at which I am going to buy it from you is going to be constant. Let us say, let's fix that price as 20 rupees per kg. And since we do not want any issues to come on later on, let's document this, let's keep it in writing. That means Let's make a legal contract. So now the whole thing is documented 
and what what does it say that mr shetty is going to buy 1000 kg of potato 3 months from today at the rate of rupees 20 per kg mr farmer is obliged to sell these 1000 kg of potato at the rate of rupees 20 irrespective of what is the price of the potatoes on that particular day now let's assume a scenario that the price actually turned out to be 25 rupees per kg now mr shetty is suddenly very happy because he would say that price in the market is 25 so had this contract not been existing i would have paid 25 per kg but using this contract now i can buy potatoes only at rupees 20 per kg which means that my benefit is rupees 5 per kg into 1000 is equal to 5000 which means that this piece of paper here now is worth 5000 because the price of the potatoes in the market is 25 this piece of paper has derived value of 5000 because the price of potatoes in the market is 25 let's assume a, or let's think of a scenario where the price in the market is only 12 rupees per kg now mr farmer is very happy because he would say that without this contract i would have been selling my potatoes at 12 rupees per kg but now using this contract i have a right that i can sell these potatoes at a substantially higher price of 20 my benefit is 8 rupees total quantity 1000 this piece of paper is worth for me 8000 rupees that means that value of this piece of paper is changing based on how the value of potatoes is changing in the market and this is precisely what a derivative contract is a derivative contract is a contract which derives its value based on the value of underlying asset potatoes in our example is the underlying asset and this particular piece of paper is a derivative contract which is the first type of derivative called as forward contract time is running out so with this we will stop it here for the subsequent type of contracts see you in the next video bye bye